Hello everybody, it's mentor jeweler Joel McFadden and today I'm going to do a little video about my visit with Swiss jeweler Klaus Cutter and show you his store in Rhode Island and he's going to talk in this video about his apprenticeship in Switzerland. It's fascinating. The way they do things is very different from what we do and I think you'll really enjoy it. So, how long have you been in this location? This, I bought this building about five years ago. And, and, uh, this used to be an old, an old uh, barber shop or a, a lady's hair salon. There were still the old plastic hoods in there. And oh, I, wow. It was unbelievable. So, you do everything from watch batteries to custom jewelry. Yeah. How many custom pieces do you think you do a week? A week? Probably two, three. Okay. Really high end ones? Good. Yeah, high. What is high end? You know, the high. High detail. Yeah. I mean, not everything, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're. You, we try to do unique things and. Uh, and we do. I also buy stellar parts and, and if people want that, you know. So you do whatever people want. I do, yeah. I mean, hey, yeah. I'm here to. My family, not to, not to be. Uh, now we have to roll with the punches, you know. Yeah. And that's what I learned. A lot of the people that watch my videos are learning to be jewelers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and I that's the primary audience. So I had three questions to start with. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide to pursue being a jeweler? Oh, it was in the family a little bit. Okay. And uh, there was a, at one point there was a company I was supposed to take over with my brother, but that was fashion jewelry. And that all, that all collapsed like the, or an old party. Where was this? Germany. Okay. And that was my, I mean, I was always a hands-on guy, I loved it. I used to work at my grandfather's place, and, and I've worked on jewelry on now since I'm probably 10, 11 years old. But uh, seriously, that was, I st seriously, I started in 87. That was when I started my apprenticeship. So tell us a little about your apprenticeship was in Switzerland or Germany? Uh, Switzerland, Geneva. And, and, you know, what was that like? In Geneva, they, they need people who make their high-end watches and jewelry, and that's what they, and they create people who have the bench skills to do that. And it's, it's very, it's, it's kind of interesting, it's, it's very skill-driven and not design-driven. They don't want designers or artists, they want people who can take the work that designers and artists did and put it into 3D. So it's, it's just driven into you to do things extremely precise and right. Was there a test to get into the apprenticeship? I mean, how did you get into it? It was very popular in my days to get into it. What they do, they call it stage. They, they take you in, your master takes you in for a week, pretty much puts you on a, on a bench and puts some tools in your hand, shows you a piece, do this doesn't tell you anything and then they see if you have certain skills and if you can hack it then they might take you as an apprentice and they were in those days was like like they said in Geneva around 1500 people applicants and 35 apprenticeship places Wow <laughs> so, so did you pay your master did no. he pay you or I, just I, I got paid you got paid I got paid very little though Okay. Because I'm a, it depends, if you, uh, my master was a small independent jeweler, 
without a story, but like a contractor for the big companies. And they they didn't pay too well. I mean, I, I made in four years maybe $12,000, but I didn't have to pay anything. An apprentice in, in Europe is like you have a, like pocket money, but you could never live of it. Okay, but I think it's a great thing. I mean, I can here I see people they pay quarter of a million dollars a, for a risky education, and these guys can't make a living. You know, so right. so I'm very fortunate for what I for what I did. How long was your apprenticeship? Four years. Okay, and at the end of the four years. Was there like a test or? Oh, I can show you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You still have it. See, even the way this starts is like. The way it starts is they send people for six weeks, for six months. To learn the basics, the, the, the guild has like a teacher and a former jeweler who has worked for big companies and they teach you the basic skills so the masters doesn't lose time with you with that stuff. Huh. So you get this list, of, the master gets you all the tools and they send you to school and that's four days a week bench and one day it's uh, theoretical stuff. And you start with sewing exercises. These are, these are the things they would give you in a stage to see how we can handle. So like these are, this is all nickel silver, that's not what you work in. Why nickel silver? As opposed to copper or because, brass? Because it works like gold. Oh. Just oxidizes a little different. You can solder it with hard gold and all the, all the regular stuff, hard, medium, low. And then you do... And like little things are just. Did you like sweat solder all that together? No, no, this is pressure fit. Oh, wow. This is all. Wow. That's what they teach you. Okay, this is Geneva. Like, start, then they make you. So it's all about learning to control the saw. That's the first thing you learned was the saw. Saw file. And files. Saw file later. So you have these things. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about you know, how much how much light goes through. I mean, you can. Well, let's see. Oh wow, these come out too. They have oh, to yeah. fit tight. They fit tight. So there's no solder. It's just a tight, no tight solder. fit. And did you file it or just saw it like that? Oh, you saw, no, you file. You saw it, then you file it, and you have to put the bevels on. This is. The, you want to test somebody? This is one of the biggest bitches out there to do. Yeah. Like stuff like that. Then. I mean, this is in the first half year. So how long did it, like this plate here, how with the four time? cutouts, how long did that take you to get that right? I can tell you exactly. Because we have to keep book with ours. Right. This here, the first time was at the time 42 hours. 42 hours. Mm -hmm. And how many times did you do it until they were happy? Oh, I was pretty self-critical. I started over things myself. This might have been a few tries. Okay, that's uh, wow. And then they have like uh, where's my other test? Yeah. And this was for four years. You did stuff like this. No, no. Then this is after a while. Then you go. To your master and you start doing production. Oh, this is before you go to your master. After half a year, then you go to your master. And then once in a while you go, so you, you do this stuff. It's all developing. Where's my first year or second year test? Then you have tests. See, this was our six month test. Okay. Or oh, hold on a second. Yeah. They have to solder and cut. I don't know what that is. Yeah, this one. Oh, wow. Stuff like that, and then you have to solder it on. So how many layers is the KK piece? This is one layer soldered on another one. They're two layers. Okay. 
Then you have like different test pieces. Oh yeah, here it is. See, this was first year. They test you every year. Then later on they test your... And what they do, they test your master and yourself right into that. So that was the... Well, let's see where that is. Then you go, you, after this you go from your master, you go to, you go to the school, bring your tools with you, and then they... So did everybody get the same same, same thing? So that this year later on this is I wrote for my for pieces for a crown for huge pieces we did with my master that. What the heck is that? Yeah, that was a, that's another example I can show you. Yeah, here we go. See this was the second year test. Okay, so this was th their criteria about precision, how you, this is solder, cutting out and everything. Now this is, that's what you get and you have 40, 42 a week to do it. I did it in 27 then. See, and that's how so you record not only, okay, yeah, you're recording. So they, your they come they, and they measure everything has to be freaking precise, exactly the design. Okay. Wow, it's amazing. And then this is like this, <laughs> pressure fitted. Okay, you, you take a little bit too much off and it's ruined. And this comes all from a square piece. This wasn't round. So these are things you have to. I built myself a little lathe with my hand piece to make this. I remember that well. So, what metals are we talking about here? This is brass. And nickel? And, and the nickel silver. Hmm. It's a very good metal tool. So, uh, one See, of the... And the solder here, it, it couldn't have too much solder in there, right. the gallery, everything. Wow. So, one of the things that I press when people are assembling is to, to, the better the fit, oh, yeah. the easier it is to solder. And I think that's, you know... Solders don't, solder shouldn't make a bridge. Right. You shouldn't have to fill a gap no, with that's, solder. That's your first mistake. See, and these are little mistakes. Little things I did with my master during the K school had vacation, then you went back to work with your master. This I did like, see this the dr drill you were talking about? Yeah. This a little box. Oop. Hang on. And that's all fit to go open it up again for me? Yeah, this just pressure fit. Wow. Again. Get nickel silver. And then later on you get into, see I had, I had a great master, he let me do things. At one point we were talking about chasing, and he said, okay, you take a book and find pieces and chase it, you know. Wow, that's gorgeous. This thing in, in back and forth, that was pretty cool, and then you make rings. So, like how, so how many hours do you think that took you? I know you know because it's written in your book, but... Oh, I don't probably a week. A week to do that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that I wasn't. I wasn't really. This was dabbling in it and finding the finding ways. I mean, I, see, and then here you have. Oh yeah, then we made watch. Look at this. I love this. People don't teach this anymore. Oh yeah, this is how to build a, a hollow signet ring from flat material. Those are the guys. So this is all built from sheet. Yeah, this one. And this is the same thing, but here I I worked it before I made the ring. We we hammered it. It's the same thing as hollow. So you made that from sheet? From sheet, there's no wax. I, I did very little wax in my, during my apprenticeship. That was, I started doing a lot of wax when I went to Italy, I learned a lot. And then from uh, here, in, here in, in, in America, I started doing really heavy duty wax. I'm gonna, can I look at these? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Because I, I, you know, I've got one of these old books from the twenties where they talk about how to do this, and I just I love it. It's cool. How did you get the? Did you just hammer these down? Hammer no, yeah, yeah. like in pitch. Right, and and then, little punch it. So this punch. was flat. You hammered it, then you domed it. Yeah. And then this was the same way, right? The same way. You do that in pitch. See, and then we had also chain courses. Yep. Where we made chains. And that's cool. But the, nobody would ever pay for this nowadays. You know? Well, and that's that's the problem is that there's so much mass produced or machine made or CAD made stuff on the market that it's hey, but it's just another tool. So, you know, this is sure. this is where I started doing this chasing stuff. Here, I did a lot of ton of class for Alex watches. And oh, all right, right. So then we did this. We had a, a see in Geneva you can make a, an apprenticeship chain maker. It's four years chain making and clasps. And they don't do they don't make rings. They hmm. make all kinds, but that's a, also a dying thing, see this is Got this stuff here. Yeah, this you ask our deco nineteen hours. Nineteen hours. Wow. Yeah, so now then then starts. After a while the, the, the idea of an apprenticeship is they a good master teaches you in the first two years and in the last two years he makes a lot of money with you. So you, so you work for the last two years and... You work for very little pay. See, this is all production now. Production for him. That he would sell. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, that, but that's the payback. So what year was this? What? That you started your apprenticeship. I started in 87. Okay. How old were you? I was older. Usually they started at 16. I was 21. Okay. So I had a little different outlook on things. See, this is the test for... Third year. It's fascinating that you have all this from back then written down as a time.